The topic is the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and we're talking to Dr. Lewis V. Baldwin from Vanderbilt University. Uh, Dr. Baldwin, before we uh, end this show for today, mm -hmm. let's give you an opportunity to uh, bring in some additional information dealing with the uh, Civil Rights Act, and then later to uh, sort of point us in some direction as to where we might be able to go from here. Let's use mm -hmm. the uh, entire period to do that. Okay, before the commercial break, we were talking about uh, uh, the fact that the provisions of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 have not really been actualized mm -hmm. or, or realized mm -hmm. or, or translated into public policy mm -hmm. uh, uh, solutions. Uh, I think uh, in 1965 we needed the Voting Rights Act because part of the provisions of the Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. had not been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the Civil Rights Act of 1964, you'll notice that one aspect of it dealt with voting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there were no specific guidelines about uh, how people should register, okay. about how the government should monitor uh, voting activity mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So we needed the Civil Rights Act of 1965. Mm -hmm. uh, had to be added as, mm -hmm. as another piece of civil mm -hmm. rights legislation. Mm -hmm. Uh, when Dr. King was killed, in, before he was killed in 1968, mm -hmm. uh, he made a comment about all of these pieces of legislation, mm -hmm. and he, he put the, the responsibility for the failure of these pieces of legislation mm -hmm. on the federal government, mm -hmm. because he felt that it's one thing to adopt, to introduce, to pass civil rights legislation. Mm -hmm. It's quite another to provide the resources to, mm -hmm. for the implementation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, of, of these pieces of civil rights legis legislation. So we're dealing with that problem of legacy, mm -hmm. as Dr. King raised it, with respect to civil rights mm -hmm. legislation. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and so the resources are not there in, even, even now in terms of... Now, how would you uh, bring the, uh, this whole question that we have dealing with affirmative action mm -hmm. uh, and uh, quotas and et cetera. Yeah. Uh, is, is that really considered uh, to be part of the civil rights uh, legacy of movement? Of, exactly. I mean, how would you it, put exactly. that in? What would I would say the Civil Rights Act of 1964 certainly contributed to mm -hmm. uh, this. Uh, you speak of affirmative action, you speak of quotas, you speak of reparations, mm -hmm. uh, what Dr. King once called compensatory mm -hmm. measures. I think you have to see it in relationship to what happened in 1964 with the Civil Rights Bill. But the fact that these particular issues are still being raised mm -hmm. in 2004, 40 years after mm -hmm. the Civil Rights Act of 1964, uh, tells us something. Mm -hmm. And that is that, for some reason, we have not been able to resolve uh, the problems uh, surrounding civil rights, surrounding economic justice, surrounding e equal opportunity and social justice in our society. Somehow or another, we are still wrestling with the same problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, now, would you suggest that that uh, uh, that uh, when we think in terms of economic justice, that uh, it took us almost 40 years to uh, deal with what was considered what might be considered the most important elements, and that's public accommodation mm -hmm. and uh, voting rights and et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and and now we only had an we've only had an opportunity now uh, right. to get around to dealing with uh, yeah. Title VI and That's some right. of the other aspects of well, it, and yeah. that it might be time to deal with those particular aspects uh, of it. Well, what we have come to see over the last 40 years is that uh, even though the Civil Rights Act of 1964 guaranteed job opportunities, equal employment mm -hmm. opportunities, education, mm -hmm. that if you don't have the financial resources, it doesn't mean much. Mm -hmm. You can have equal opportunity, but to uh, ac equal access to restaurants, mm -hmm. hotels, mm -hmm. educational institutions. But if you don't have the money or the resources mm -hmm. to find your place in these institutions, then it becomes problematic. And the 64 Civil Rights Act did not address that. Mm -hmm. The problem of economic inequality and the lack of economic empowerment, mm -hmm. not only in black communities, but in other minority communities mm -hmm. and among women as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there, uh, are you suggesting that we might to be able to generate a new push mm -hmm. in terms of civil rights, to recognize that, that, that the law has, is there, mm -hmm. but there has to be some other kind of method toward enforcing them, those laws? Yes, I, I also think that the political climate today, the night in 2004, mm -hmm. Uh, would make necessary mm -hmm. uh, a revisitation of some of this civil rights legislation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also a push for the advancement of new civil rights mm -hmm. legislation. We see today, and I think we'll continue to see, uh, an erosion mm -hmm. of, of affirmative action guidelines. We will see 
uh, an attack attacks on civil rights mm -hmm. legislation of the past attacks on civil mm -hmm. rights uh, um, and, and and these kinds of things will occur given the conservative mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. political climate mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in today so I think mm -hmm. you're right in saying that we will need to revisit much of this mm -hmm. history of civil rights legislation while at the same time looking toward uh, the possibility of enhancing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this kind of legislation mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, uh, Title VI, and, and, and of course we uh, will uh, deal with Title VI mm -hmm. uh, as part of uh, the uh, civil rights discussion that we're having here. Yeah. But now, uh, Title VI still uh, provides for the uh, federal government yes. to intervene mm -hmm. in, a, in, in a real positive way. Yeah. Well, now, why is it that uh, when we have laws, and, and the laws are quite explicit in terms yeah. of what ought to be done and et cetera, yeah. that uh, there's a, a, a really non-enforcement of, of some of these laws. So I'll explain that. Yeah, I, I think you have to see it from the angle of, of, of lack of federal government enforcement. Mm -hmm. I think the federal government is largely responsible once it puts these pieces of legislation mm -hmm. in place uh, for, the, for the implementation of, mm -hmm. of these pieces of legislation. And I think that's where the failure uh, rests today. Mm -hmm. We're in a pol uh, conservative political climate today, uh, and uh, I think that contributes, I think, to a lack of attention mm -hmm. uh, to these kinds of issues, and I think we will continue to f confront mm -hmm. that in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Dr. Baldwin, uh, we've got about uh, three minutes here, and uh, what I'd like to do now is to uh, have you to make some statements in reference to, uh, and to speak primarily, as we often try to do, to speak mm -hmm. primarily to uh, some of the younger people in terms of mm -hmm. the, their responsibility, in terms of what they have to do in order to uh, not only make the Civil Rights Act a, a reality, mm -hmm. but in terms of improving their own lives as well as the lives of others. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said earlier, one of the provisions of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 uh, calls for improvement in educational opportunity mm -hmm. and, 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 and equality in e educational opportunity. I think uh, for young people today, they must make sure that they take advantage of these kinds of educational mm -hmm. opportunities that have been provided over the last four decades mm -hmm. because of civil rights legislation. Mm -hmm. Because if these opportunities are not uh, um, taken into account mm -hmm. or embraced, then somehow or another we fail. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so there's still a, a real need for uh, civil rights legislation. There's yeah. still a real need uh, for resources that are available, yeah. et cetera. And there's still also a need for us as African Americans to demonstrate mm -hmm. uh, that not only that these pieces of legislation are needed, but that we're going to do our best to benefit mm -hmm. from them once they are put in place. Mm -hmm. And that means taking advantage of opportunity once it is provided. Mm -hmm through civil rights mm -hmm. legislation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. our whole cause is meaningless. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, very soon we will uh, celebrate, I think, uh, this year, uh, the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, mm -hmm. uh, birthday. And, and, and of course, you uh, have uh, played a very, very significant mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. in terms of uh, helping us to highlight that. Yeah. But now, what would you say in terms of uh, the upcoming celebration in, uh, of Dr. Martin Luther I mean, what should the attitude of of individuals be in reference to this great celebration? I, I think that uh, given the fact that these, the next celebration is in 05, I think it would be great for us to think of King in relationship to the Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 mm -hmm. because he was so instrumental in the introduction and passage of both of mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. pieces of civil rights legislation. So I think we need to remember him in that connection. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years we've uh, remembered him in connection with global issues, mm -hmm. remember him in connection with affirmative action, mm -hmm. uh, economic issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we've discussed him in relationship to the issues of violence and nonviolence. But I think the next celebration should be, uh, should, should be devoted to uh, viewing him and celebrating mm -hmm. him in relationship to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And, and of course, that would be a great honor, way to uh, honor Dr. King uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in this upcoming uh, celebration. And also to rekindle our commitment mm -hmm. to the fulfillment mm -hmm. of, of these pieces of legislation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Baldwin, let me uh, simply say over the last uh, few seconds that we have here that we certainly appreciate you coming by and giving us that information about mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964, but it only uh, continues what you've done for us over the last many years. Thank uh, you. You've given Thank us so much excellent information, and uh, 
you've uh, sort of provided somewhat of a platform yes. for us to have a real understanding on mm -hmm. this particular show in reference to uh, what the Civil Rights Act is, was all about, not mm -hmm. only the act, but uh, what civil rights uh, has meant uh, mm -hmm. in the United States of America. And I think it's because of those efforts that we're able to uh, talk about the progress that we've had. Thank and you. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning. Thank you.